Good morning. It is Thursday, May 14th, 2020. I'm Keith Tebow. Hopefully you're having a great start to your Thursday. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunny day, and I guess that's what we can expect here uh, during the springtime. It is a Thursday morning, 9.30, and that's been our traditional time where we speak with the uh, mayor of the city of Fall River, uh, Mayor Paul Coogan. Uh, mayor, I uh, appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for joining us as always. There you are. That helps. We were, you were on mute. No. Uh, thank you for joining us. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, so um, let me let me ask you, you know, um, over the past week, we like to talk about the numbers of COVID-19 here in the city. And, um, you know, over the past uh, six days, we've had some consistent numbers, 26, 26, 22, Monday, 11. Um, on, on Tuesday, it was 21. Yesterday, we had a huge spike, the biggest number yet, 97. I guess the question I have for you is, do we know why? Um, something's going on with the sound, Keith, just so you know, your, the tail half of your question got cut off, but I'll, uh, I, I'm thinking you want to know why we went up so much yesterday. Yes. Um, I was down there and I just left the, the Department of Health a little while ago. The number this morning is much more consistent with what you described earlier. So it seems like we're back where we belong, but we'll monitor it all day. Um, what happened? Yesterday was when the uh, when the people in the uh, Department of Health left the office, they were looking at a number of like 30 or 40. When they got there in the morning, it was like 80. Um, a number of positive cases were put into the system overnight, um, some dating back as far as 5-5, five, five, and uh, that jumped our number. That happened once before, if you remember back, who I want to say a month ago, one day we jumped about 75 numbers. It was the same kind of thing. What what happens is, uh, for some reason, uh, if you look at the process, they go to a, uh, a nursing home or someone's house or you go to a doctor's office, they test you. They take the vial, they mail it to a lab, the lab gets the results, they notify the office, could be a doctor, and they send it to the Department of Public Health. Somewhere in this chain, there's there was a lag time and it and ended up being in, in some cases almost a week. They pile in all at the same time. I'd much rather have a number, let's say instead of 21, legitimately that day there was 27, 28. That would string it out and it would cause us not to have this bubble. Um, we get the numbers from the Department of Health. They go on to a uh, reporting system, system called MAVEN, which then identifies the four res uh, residents, tells us when they tested positive, and uh, enters them into our database so we could look at it. And that's what happened. There were not 97 cases um, brought into the system yesterday. There was 97 cases reported into the system yesterday. Yeah, and I know we've also had um, uh, many more fatalities over the past week. We're up to 17 uh, now. Yeah. And I also noticed that currently at, at Charlton, there are uh, there were 82, uh, I believe over 80 people um, at Charlton uh, being being treated. Um, are you still hearing that there's more testing maybe being done than what has been in, in the past? And again, that usually contributes to a higher number. Right. Our, our testing numbers are definitely starting to ramp up. Um, we're going to, we have star having a drive through test place. Rite Aid's going to be opening one. Um, Charlton's obviously Prima Care, uh, St. Anne's. These are all testing um, companies that are that are doing a number of tests now. Uh, and I believe our testing numbers are definitely going to ramp up, which again, will give us a better a handle on wh where exactly we stand with the disease. And it will also hopefully move us to the end just a little quicker. Yeah. Um, also um, in, in the past uh, two, less than two weeks, Governor Baker has been in the city. Uh, last week he was at Merrill Manufacturing. Yesterday he was at Star. You mentioned Star where they have the, the drive through uh, uh, testing. Have you been able to uh, meet with the governor on any of those occasions and maybe get an insight on what we may see on Monday when the uh, state is looking to uh, ease up some of its state home orders and, and restrictions? Uh, I, I actually haven't. I talked to the governor's office on um, Tuesday night. They called me and uh, asked me uh, if I wanted to go to the um, event at star and i said what are you guys thinking they said well we're trying to keep the crowd down i said that's fine i have work to do i'll be glad to stay away they don't want a lot of people if you notice a lot of our local legislators also uh 
don't participate. Not, not it's not really the same as a typical um, political announcement or a typical come down and say something good about things. These are uh, these are heads up for uh, a, a pandemic fight. Well, that's what that's what the governor's here for. He's here to acknowledge the work going on in that drive-through. He's not really here for a photo op or a uh, or uh, to say. You know, he's going to award us with a grant or something good. The governor is always around for things like that. And I'm more than happy to meet with him. And I'm more than happy to go to the state house. And they're fine for all that. But right now, in the middle of a, a pandemic, he's going around the state. And it's the same consistent message all the time. Social distancing, wash your hands, uh, keep keep your, uh, your, your groups to under 10 and uh, get tested. So it's really... You know, I mean, I, I, I say it, too. We were talking about doing a press conference, but I want to make sure we'll do it after Monday when we have something new to say, hopefully, to the residents so we can give them a heads up on where we're going. But um, I don't have to attend all those things. He's uh, He works very closely with us on anything that's impacting Fall River, uh, especially uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito. She did invite me over to the one at... Um, UMass Dartmouth when they opened up the field hospital. So I were there. Uh, we're very, very connected to uh, our legislators and uh, the administration up in the state house. So they'll do anything to help us, and I rely on them. Uh, let me ask you a little bit about some other, um, and we've, we've talked about this before, um, a number of cases I know across the Commonwealth, I know in Rhode Island, uh, a lot of the cases, and unfortunately, a lot of the fatalities happen in nursing homes. I know I've asked you this before. Um, is there still some added, um, not just pressure, but some added um, attention being taken to nursing homes and making sure those people there are are tested when needed and are appropriately quarantined when needed? Uh, well, yeah, we do that. That we're we're in regular connect with our nursing home. Last night, I I went to uh, South Point. I went to Catholic Memorial Home, and I went to uh, Cavallo over here on Oak Grove Avenue, dropping off some. Um, hand sanitizer that one of our local companies made because those those people had in our call we call them at least once a week that they told us that's what they were short so when i got home from work yesterday afternoon i ran it around myself and dropped them off a few gowns and when i did that i got to talk to people at at south point and at uh cavallo and ask them how they're doing uh, most of our nursing homes seem like they have a handle on it. That doesn't mean they have a handle on the number of positives in the thing. They have a handle on how to deal with it. Um, South Point, for example, where I got to talk with three or four other people uh, outside when I was dropping off the hand sanitizer, said they had um, maybe 27 positives in there right now. Half of them or more were asymptomatic, which adds to how difficult it is to fight this disease. You have people that are positive for COVID, even at an extended age, and they aren't showing any symptoms. So it's like, it's so tough to deal with this disease. That's why the National Guard came down and tested everybody and identified who was positive. They have them isolated. They're making sure they get the care they need, but they're not showing symptoms. Another nursing home up on Highland Avenue relayed a similar message to these people that are COVID positive, but they're not having any symptoms. So some of them, they don't even think they're sick, but they really are. And, um, and we have to keep a handle on it. Uh, some of our nursing homes are really uh, flying along. Um, the far of a Jewish home, a Catholic Memorial home. Um, Sarah Brayton seems to have a handle on it. They're doing, they're doing a great job. Some had a little bit more of a bubble up than others. But uh, right now, from what we're being told in our office, they have a handle on it. They know where they're going. And uh, they're well into the battle. And we'll do whatever we can to support them. Another question I tend to ask you more often than not is how people in Fall River are behaving. Um, we talked about last week the uh, governor's order about wearing masks in public, especially if they're around people and they're not able to appropriately social uh, distance uh, when they're out and about. Uh, are you still seeing a majority of our residents, um, you know, behaving, I will say, uh, wearing masks and, and still being diligent in terms of their, their hygiene and, and their social distancing? Oh, I think so. I mean, I, I get, I get, um, I get a lot of calls about a, a group here. We went to a group the other day up at the dog park. We got a complaint that there were four people sitting together, um, and the dog was running around. We got up there. It was a family. I mean, they drove together in the car there, but when you look at it from the outside, it looked like there's four people that aren't social distancing. So someone 
felt like they should report that to us. And we had someone look at it and it's, it was a family walking the dog. So sometimes what you see and what is really happening are two different things. Um, but in, in Fall River, we've had tremendous compliance um, with, with masks, with uh, social distancing, with people. We don't have, you don't see any of those cases where people are saying, I'm opening no matter what they say. The people are being patient. They want to ride this out and they want to do what's right for the city. They know they're helping Fall River at a tremendous cost to themselves and their families. And they're sticking their head into the battle and they're doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, my I tip my hat to them. They really, uh, they've made this so much easier. This could be really, really bad if people were over here saying, we're opening up Wednesday, send the police. It could turn into a real show. I'm hoping the governor loosens up the, 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 strains, the restraints on the, the economy a little bit Monday and gives people some hope. Yeah. And that, that gets to my uh, my final question of the week again. The governor, um, even though he announced his four phases this week on how the state will eventually reopen, he's going to have some uh, details and specifics uh, on on Monday. Um, I, I, you know, even listening to the governor yesterday when he was in Fall River and he's asked this day in and day out. And I know the reporters have to ask the questions about, you know, what level of, of opening will take place. He says he's going to announce it on, on Monday. Um uh, do you have any concern at all that he may go a little too far uh, or do you think he's been, you know, a steady keel on this right along and will continue to be that way? No, I, I think, I think Governor Baker's done a good job overall. Uh, this is, this is one of those things you do not learn this in any political science class. You don't, you don't, no one, no one, you couldn't call up anybody and say, how did you handle the last pandemic? These things are very, very difficult. And every decision you make is fraught with danger that you make a mistake and, uh, there's there's a number of people that aren't afraid to point the finger, and sometimes it's it's warranted. Um, I hope that he sees where we are, and in relation to that, makes some steps to let people get back to somewhat of a normal life. Um, I think it, what I've seen in Fulver that people are responsible, and they could comply with any of his wishes. I think there are things we could do, and I've expressed myself myself to the lieutenant governor in this, and I was on the phone this morning with Senator Rodericks and we were talking about it. I do have a say. I put it out there, whether they take my advice or not. I think there are some things we could do safely to make sure we get things going, but uh, let's see what happens. I I just think we have to slowly ease our way back into it with an eye on safety and uh, getting people to uh, understand it's for their own good. All right, Mayor Paul Coogan, I appreciate your time as always, and uh, we'll talk again uh, in a week. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you to Mayor Paul Coogan for joining us, as he has been every Thursday at this time. And we want to thank you for joining us as well. Again, make sure you check out our website, frmedia.org, for the latest on how we're covering COVID-19 here in Fall River, as well as many other information concerning our Channel 95 program schedule. I'm Keith Tebow. Thank you for joining me today, and we will see you again very soon.